What's going on there YouTube and welcome to Fresh Comic Stories. Guys, this is the channel where we basically sit down and cover different kinds of comic book stories. Now guys, today we are going to jump into some Young Avengers. Now guys, honestly, this was a short run back in the year 2005. Matter of fact, it only hit 12 issues and that's it. And so guys, it should only take us two videos to cover the whole run of Young Avengers in the early 2000s. But guys, these kids are basically picking up right after the Avengers had disassembled. And the thing is though guys, these kids, they want to be the new Avengers, the Young Avengers. Guys, I do hope you enjoyed this video and if you do, please hit that like button down below. And guys, also subscribe for more comic book stories in the near future. But guys, let's dive into Young Avengers Volume 1. Now guys, to begin today's storyline, we do pick up at the Daily Bugle. Now, we do pick up with Jessica Jones, Kate Farrell, and J. Jonah Jameson. Now, these three characters right here, they're right now talking about the Young Avengers because right now, the Daily Bugle has them as their big story on the front page in today's paper. But the thing is, JJ is kind of like, we need to learn more about these people because right now, we have four kids going out there saving the day and calling themselves the Young Avengers. Now, these four characters are Patriot, Hulkling, Asgardian, and Iron Lad. And so you have JJ kind of like, we need to learn more about these characters. And so he looks at Jessica Jones and he's like, listen, you used to be an Avenger. Maybe with your connections, you'll be able to learn more information about these kids. Now, you do have Jessica leave the Daily Bugle and she does run into Iron Man and Captain America. Now, with these two characters right here, the reason why they've gone to Jessica Jones, because she used to be a PI, a private investigator. And so with her skills, it's kind of like, are you able to locate these kids? Because we need to shut them down. Steve Rogers feel like with these kids being out there as superheroes, they could get somebody hurt or worse. And so he's kind of like, we need to shut them down right now before something bad happens to them down the road. Now we do jump over to a small church and at this church right now, you do have a wedding going on. The thing is though, out of nowhere, a bunch of men with gun rush into the church and take every single person there as a hostage. Now you do have the young Avengers rush in and they do try to save the day. The problem is when they go to rush in, they make things worse. Because guys, this is Marvel showing us that the Young Avengers are still a new team. They're still learning how to be a hero, a superhero team. And so when they rushed in, they made things worse and they almost got Kate Bishop hurt. Now guys, this is the first appearance of Kate Bishop, the second Hawkeye in Marvel Comics. But the thing is, with the Young Avengers rushing in, they almost got her shot, but luckily she has skills in fighting and she was able to defend herself and also help the Young Avengers save the day. Now, you do have the Young Avengers, Avengers sorry, leave the church because they're afraid the police officers will arrest them. It's kind of like, listen, we can't be here. We made things worse and also I'm pretty sure what we're doing right now, teenagers as heroes, is not really legal. We need to leave now. Now the thing is though, you do have the Young Avengers go back to the Avengers Mansion. Now of course, you do have three of the members leave to go home for the day, but Iron Lad stays behind. Now guys, with them going to Avengers Mansion, it makes sense because this does take place right after Avengers disassemble, 
where the mansion was destroyed. But the thing is, Tony Stark never fixed up the mansion. And so the young Avengers hide here because most people would not look here first. The thing is, when Iron Lad walks inside the Avengers mansion, he does run into Jessica Jones, Tony Stark, and Steve Rogers. They're right there to greet him. Now, you do have Iron Man ask Iron Lad a few questions all like, who are you? Like, who in the world are you? Matter of fact, how is your armor more advanced than mine? And I'm Iron Man. And you have Iron Lad take off his helmet to tell Steve Rogers, Tony Stark, and Jessica Jones who he is. And he says, listen, my name is King. I am King the Conqueror, but the teenage version of King the Conqueror. Now guys, when it comes to the origin of King the Conqueror, it's kind of weird in Marvel Comics. And what I mean is that guys, when it comes to King the Conqueror, you have multiple versions of King the Conqueror in Marvel Comics. But the basic version is that King the Conqueror, he lived in the 30th century. The thing is, he found a time machine, went back to ancient Egypt, and became some kind of king in the past at that point right there but then when he tried to use the time machine to return back home he ended up in the 40th century instead but the thing is also guys in the 40th century there was a big war going on between two different alien races and the thing is king the conqueror used technology at that moment right there to end that war and became the conqueror of the 40th century the thing is though you have the teenage version of him tell him his story and he says listen tony steve and jessica i'm just a teenage version of king but the thing is though my future self king the conqueror came to me right when i was about to get stabbed by a bunch of bullies and he saved my life but when he saved me though he told me about my origin he told me what will happen to me down the road. But the thing is, after he told me all of that information, it shocked me. And I'm kind of like, wait, someone like me, a nice person, is going to end up killing a bunch of people in the future? Not like hundreds, but millions of people? I can't do that. And so instead, what I did, I used the armor he gave me, went back in time to come see you guys to help me fight against King the Conqueror. But when I arrived here though, well listen, you guys were disassembled. There was no longer an Avengers team at this point in the timeline. But also, I tried to come to each and every one of you guys, but you all ignored me. Now, luckily, when I came back here to Avengers Mansion, I was able to find the Vision. And the Vision was able to help me start up a new program, the Young Avengers. Now, we do jump over to Kate Bishop. And think so, guys, right now, Kate Bishop is in the hospital because her dad feels like she got hurt when she was attacked earlier at that church when the wedding was going on. Now, she does leave her father behind to go outside and catch some fresh air, but she does run into Cassie Lang. Now guys, this is the daughter of Scott Lang, the second Ant-Man. And with her running into Cassie, these two quickly bond with one another and become close friends. But they feel like they both belong with the young Avengers and also they want to learn more about them. And so you have Cassie and Kate kind of rush out of the hospital to go see if they're able to locate the young Avengers. And the thing is though guys, they figured out the young Avengers are probably at Avengers Mansion. Now, once the girls get there and break inside the mansion, they're not greeted by Iron Man, Tony Stark, Jessica Jones, and Iron Lad. They're greeted by the rest of the young Avengers. Hulkling, Asgardian, and Patriot. Now, Patriot, he's a jerk. Like, guys, honestly, this man is a huge jerk in this comic because when the girls try to break in he's kind of like you need to leave you are not even welcome here at all and you have cassie kind of like listen 
My father was Scott Lang. He was Ant-Man. This was his home. And also, I lived here once a month because I had to see my father. And the thing is though, this is also my home then. And so you can't tell me I'm not allowed to walk into my old home at all. And so she gets so angry so quickly that she basically grew size. She grew up in size to a giant woman size. And it's kind of like, oh crap. The powers of Ant-Man and Giant-Man is inside Cassie Lang. She is able to freely grow size or shrink down to size without using any kind of PIM particles to do it. Now guys, we do get a one page setting with a conversation going on between Tony Stark, Steve Rogers, Jessica Jones, and Iron Lad. Because you have Tony Stark kind of like, listen man, how in the world are you able to get the vision? Like, how do you have vision here with you right now? Because guys, remember, the vision died. He died in Avengers Disassembled. That man got murdered. And it's kind of like, how in the world is the vision here right now? And you have Iron Lad like, dude, all I did is download the vision inside of me. That's all I did. Like, it's not that complicated at all. He's here again, but really, he's part of me. Now, of course, they do hear a sound outside. When they walk outside, they see Cassie Lang has passed out because her body is not used to her newfound powers yet. It's kind of like, whoa, this is a whole new thing for us. You being able to grow in size. Now, the thing is, you do have Patriot, Hulkling, and Asgardian realize who's behind them right now. And it's kind of like, oh crap, is Steve Rogers and Tony Stark, AKA Iron Man and Captain America. And they all knew that it's time for them to have the big conversation about them being superheroes. Now you do have Steve Rogers sit down with the Young Avengers, which again is only four people, Patriot, Asgardian, Hulkling, and Iron Lad. Now we already know Iron Lad's origin story, but when you have Steve Rogers ask the rest of the group, what is your origin? Like how in the world did you guys get your powers? When it comes to Asgardian and Hulkling, they say, listen, we have no idea how we got our powers. But when it comes to Patriot though, he's all like, I can tell you where I got my powers from. I got it from my grandfather, the first Captain America, the black Captain America. And guys, he's talking about Isaiah Bradley. Now guys, back in the 1940s, they were really pushing the super soldier serum. And the thing is though guys, Steve Rogers was not really the only person to get that serum. A bunch of people did. Matter of fact guys, when it comes to the origin of Isaiah Bradley, the black Captain America as Marvel calls him, he was one of 300 African Americans they used to test out the super soldier serum. And so you have Patriots say, I needed a blood transfusion. And so my grandfather was the only person who blood type matches mine. And so when he gave me his blood, of course, it had the super soldier serum inside of him still and it passed on to me and that's how i'm able to be a super soldier and it's kind of like wow that's kind of different but okay now while you have everybody talking to one another out of nowhere they do get attacked by the growing men now guys the growing men are just robots that were made by king the conqueror but the reason why they're here right now because they're looking for the teenage version of king the conqueror because they were sent by the adult version of king the conqueror but the thing is though you do have the avengers and the young avengers kind of work together to defeat the growing men and after they did that you do have iron lad tell steve rogers and tony stark the big thing he's kind of like listen the adult version of me is looking for me he's trying to take me back to my time because he feels like if i stay here he will not exist anymore which means he will no longer be 
the conqueror anymore at all in the 40th century and so right now he's trying to get me and put me back in my time but the thing is though guys you have steve rogers kind of like we need to train you guys because if king is coming you guys are not ready so take off your armor because we need to see if you guys are able for hand-to-hand -hand combat now guys with the young avengers taking off their armors and everything and walking inside this random room that's supposed to train them supposedly it was a trap because again steve rogers wants to shut down the young avengers he felt like these kids should not be superheroes at all and so he locked them inside there to call up their parents the thing is though while tony stark steve rogers and jessica jones are talking to one another out of nowhere king the conqueror actually does appear now you do have steve rogers jessica jones and also tony stark talk to king the conqueror and you have king the conqueror just basically lay it out for them he's kind of like guys you have to give me the boy so i can put him back in his present time because if i don't do that everything changes guys remember when it comes to king the conqueror's origin story he's supposed to go back in time to ancient egyptian time to be a great pharaoh but the thing is if he's not there that automatically changes things there in the past and that goes all the way up to the present day and up to the 40th century where king the conqueror is a ruler everything changes with the young boy not being in the present time and so you have king the conqueror like listen look around you everything is already changing matter of fact jessica jones is no longer pregnant look at her her kid had disappeared she was pregnant in the beginning of the storyline and now she is not you have to give me the boy now downstairs in that one room where the young avengers are locked up in they're able to break out but the thing is they're kind of like we have to leave like your adult version is here for you we have to leave now iron last kind of like maybe he's right guys like look around everything is changing and it's not for the betterment it's getting for the worst of time like everything is falling apart and so you have iron lad kind of like we should just give myself back to him but the thing is as soon as the young avengers escape the room escape the tunnel they are greeted by the adult avengers and came the conqueror now you do have this kind of like civil war between the young avengers and the adult avengers and they do go back and forth just for a few pages but the thing is though you have kane the conqueror the adult version just wipe every single person out he's kind of like bam they're all knocked out listen here my younger version of myself i need to take you and put you in the right time because if i don't you and I will no longer exist. The friends you made here will no longer exist as well. You are ruining everything by coming back here and trying to be a good guy. You're supposed to go back to ancient Egyptian time and be a great Pharaoh. And if you don't do that, you change that, but also this time as well. Is a King the Conqueror, the adult version, just laying everything out for his younger self? now when it comes to the fifth chapter of this storyline this chapter is used as a way of to show us the young avengers are not going to give up that easily because they still feel like hey listen iron lad is one of us he's part of this crew we built a bond here between all of us and we can't afford to lose him and so they're kind of like we are going to continue to fight against king the conqueror even though we know this is a losing battle we cannot afford to give him up now you do have some of the members actually force iron lad to go away because you have iron lad like no let him take me look around you guys time is falling apart you have to let me go but you have some of the members of the young avengers kind of like no bro like we can't let you go 
we need you to stay here with us don't worry somehow time will fix itself and the thing is this is marvel showing us that teenagers don't think straight they're kind of like listen we got this time will fix itself some weird way but we cannot lose our best friend we will keep fighting to the very end but you have iron lad like no guys look around time is falling apart i am ruining everything just let me go with king the conqueror the adult version of myself now we do get a few more pages of the young avengers fighting against king the conqueror and they do get their butt kicked once again but at the very last minute right when it seems like all hope is lost because it seems like king is about to kill everybody off you have iron lad stabbed his own adult version of himself to save his friends and it's kind of like yo king the conqueror well the future 40th century king the conqueror is actually dead like iron lad just killed his older version of himself now with the final chapter of this storyline as soon as King the Conqueror, the adult version, had died because once again he was stabbed by his younger version, everything around the Young Avengers start to turn back normal. And what I mean, while the whole time they were fighting against the King the Conqueror from the future, the adult version, everything around them looked like hell. Buildings were destroyed. There was no life around them. But with him dying, everything turned back to normal it looks like normal new york city but the big thing is though when they turn around the avenger mansion is also back but it's back as it was before avengers disassembled it wasn't destroyed and you had the young avengers look over and they realize oh crap there's all these different tombstones here the avengers are dead because Cain the Conqueror died. He never went back to ancient Egyptian time and came a great pharaoh. And with that change right there, a lot of things also change in the Marvel timeline to the point where the Avengers are all dead. And so that is when you have the young Avengers realize, okay, we need Iron Lad to just go back to his time to fix everything because if we don't this is our time this is our present day and this present day is honestly not that great because a bunch of heroes are dead matter of fact guys you have some of the young avengers start to disappear as guardian and hulkling start to disappear and it's kind of like oh crap again with time changing they're disappearing they could be dead or possibly somewhere else in the world completely different. We don't know, but time is changing. And so you have Iron Lad use his own armor as a way to open up a time portal to walk into his own time, to take everything that's broken and basically have it all fixed with him going back to his present time, with him becoming Cain the Conqueror in the past and also the future. But with that happening right there, of course, you have all the Avengers that died come back to life. You had the young Avengers who disappear come right back. Everybody's back again where they, where they were before Iron Lad walked away into the time portal. Now, you have Steve Rogers kind of like, listen, you guys prove yourselves that you guys can be great heroes, possibly future Avengers. But the thing is though, I still have to shut you guys down because you guys are just kids. You guys are just children trying to be superheroes and we can't have that. And so I'm shutting down the young Avengers. Leave all your gear with me. You guys can no longer be heroes at all. And if I get word of you guys being the Young Avengers, I will find a way to permanently shut you guys down. Because what you're doing right now is not a game. This is a dangerous thing to be playing with. 
And so this is Steve Rogers just telling them, you guys are officially done. Now, we do jump forward a few weeks and you have the, the last few members of the Young Avengers meet up once again as Guardian, Hulkling, Kate Bishop, Cassie Lang, and you also have Patriot there as well. And they all come together and you have Kate Bishop say, listen, we were a family there back then fighting against King the Conqueror. We did so much together and we proved that we can be our own superhero team. Listen, I do know that Steve Rogers, Tony Stark, and Jessica Jones told us no, but honestly, who gives a damn? Let's go out there and be heroes once again. And so you have the Young Avengers go to this old building and just say, look, I brought back all our gear. Well, maybe some upgrades, but I brought all our gear back here again. All our gear is here and we can be the Young Avengers once again. And that honestly wraps up volume one of Young Avengers. Now guys, I do hope you like today's video. And if you do, please hit that like button down below and also subscribe for more comic book stories in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read? Well, let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But guys, this is the end of Young Avengers Volume 1.